Hi, I'm Betty Hart, and I am the director of Evelyn in Purgatory. And I'm Topher Payne. I'm the playwright of Evelyn in Purgatory. So let's start by talking about this title. What's that about? Um, Evelyn in Purgatory refers to the rubber rooms in New York. They're uh, commonly known rubber rubber, rubber rooms. Um, you know, like in an insane asylum. Oh, you know, like okay. cart okay. me off to a rubber room. <laughs> um, whenever a, uh, a school teacher in New York public schools is accused of any kind of impropriety in the classroom or break, uh, breaking any kind of rule, while they're being investigated for the charge, they would be sent to a room in the Department of Education building mm -hmm. to await their hearing, which sounds like a pretty reasonable process, um, and they collect their full salary while they're there, so. That's a good deal. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then they might be there for a year, a year and a half, mm -hmm. two years, just showing up every day, and the only thing that, the only edict is, you're not allowed to work. Um, you just <laughs> have to sit and wait. And when I heard a news story about it, the first thing it made me think of was the Breakfast Club. Yeah. When they all show up for detention and the principal tells them, you're not allowed to do any work. And you just have to sit here, you're in detention. Mm -hmm. And that was where I made the connection. I like it, I like it. So, is this a comedy? Yes. Absolutely. It's a, you know, it's, it, it's serious things happening to really funny people. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing I always love about the, uh, the time and craft of, of creating characters is you end up with these people who manage to say exactly the right thing at exactly the right moment and always have that zinger ready, which I really envy in my characters. <laughs> <laughs> There's some French for uh, French word for it. You know, the, the thought you have while walking down the stairs. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and and see, and if I were as smart as my characters, I would know what that word is. <laughs> and that's what I love about these people coming together with that have a love of language. Um, because teachers um, you know, are just inherently interesting people. They they have a a field of expertise that makes them fascinating as individuals. I love that you said that because my dad was a teacher, so I, I didn't agree. Know that. I know. Yeah, he was. He was a teacher, and uh, and he was amazing. And I've met students who remember him from thirty or forty years ago. They still had that kind of love for my dad. So well, and in that in that the way it is with the teacher that actually manages to get through. Exactly. You know, the one that just really you look back and it's like now that teacher they got me. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, even when you did not get yourself at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this play, almost all plays of yours, kind of take a little while to germinate. So talk mm -hmm. about the origins. You talked about what started the play, but how long ago did you write it? What's the process been to get you to this point? I think I first heard about the Rubber Rooms about three or four years ago. Okay. And, uh, as with as always the case, I just have this old recipe box, literally a recipe box that sits on my desk. And when I have an idea I don't know what to do with, then I just jot it down and throw it in there. I love that. And every once in a while, you know, when I'm usually when I'm cleaning up the hoarders episode that is my office, <laughs> I end up going through the box and I find you know, and and there were all of these little slips. Um, with particularly with the characters that became Roberta and became Toby in the show, just little thoughts and um, conversations I would have with school teachers because so many of my friends are teachers. Mm -hmm. I think for the, you know for the very reason I said before because I find teachers fascinating. Yeah. I'm attracted to anyone with a passion, nice. and teachers are take that ultimate leap of faith of this is something I am so passionate about that I am going to impart that passion for my entire professional life. Mm. And I can't imagine doing that. Well, um, you do. You use your passion. That's true, but I don't have to deal with teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> that's not your passion, though. Your passion is writing. So you're doing exactly what teachers do without the students because that's not your passion. So what made you want to jump on and uh, lead the... Barrel of Monkeys that became our show. Well, unlike you, I actually am passionate about working with young people. So God I do. Bless her. God I, I do bless that. Her. I get to do that in my in both in my profession and uh, for fun and my volunteering. I love working with young people. So and teaching, I think, is in the blood. I, I do. I think it's kind of passed down through my family. 
Um, so I love teaching. I love uh, the impact that educators can have on an individual's life. A true story. My, I'm named the same as my mom. So throughout my childhood, I was never called by my name, my first name, because my mother was Betty. So I was a number of other nicknames, which I will not go into now. And so school, the very first day of school, they said... I just thought of like four. Oh. See, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Do not share. They said, Betty. And it was like, oh. And I loved school from that moment on because it was the place that knew me. Where they you had knew an identity. who I was. And they called me by my name. And it changed everything. So I loved going to school. And I wanted to do anything I could for teachers because they knew who I was. And so getting the opportunity to direct for you was really exciting because, one, I happen to know this guy for a while now. And um, do not tell them how long we've known each not other. Not at all. We were babies. Right. We were sweet, we lads mm -hmm. and lasses. And, um, <laughs> and um, so I've known him for a while. And I actually got to do the very first stage reading of Evelyn mm -hmm. where I got to read Evelyn. So I've been a part of this play from its early in its infancy. And I love working you know, for Essential Theater and every summer they give me something wonderful to do that's gonna stretch my brain and stretch my creative abilities to collaborate. And I just thought, how much fun would it be to work for the summer with a bunch of people being teachers and building community so that teachers will come in and say, I recognize that teacher, that's me, that's Mr. So-and-so, right. that's Miss So-and-so. So it made me excited. And that's uh, the thing that I wanted with it, you know, that I think the more specific you get with, with character and circumstance and scenario, the more universal the appeal is. It's a big lesson I learned from uh, my column. The more specific I am about how crazy I really am, <laughs> the, the more people really? connect to it yes. and go, oh my God, you too? <laughs> and, <laughs> and so... As much as, you know, so much of the research was me interviewing high school teachers and, and having those conversations, the things that really resonated and the things that really became part of the world of the play were the things that are universal about any workplace, yeah. about any group of strangers, about trying to trying to get a group of grown-ups who are all accustomed to being in charge to cooperate as a group. Right. And Lord knows in theater, we know what that's like. <laughs> and so it's not a phenomenon unique to school teachers, but I also, I loved the parallels that, because I genuinely believe about 90% of who you are is set when you're about 16. And- Actually, a little younger, middle school, middle school. And so the fact that so uh, much of the circumstances for these teachers in the rubber rooms where they've now deteriorated to all acting like their students. <laughs> they're gossipy, there's backbiting, there's, you know. There's assigned seats. There's assigned seats. <laughs> and still constantly these struggles for power because in a scenario where you are effectively powerless, you will still create a structure right. of someone being in charge and of there being rules of some kind. Um, it's just the way we work. Um, even those of us, like myself, who love to challenge rules. Yeah. Okay, so oh. the last question I'll ask you is, who should come see this play? Everybody, everybody, especially people that can pay for tickets. <laughs> <laughs> who should come see this yes. play? Seriously? Seriously. Seriously. Um, I, gosh, um, anyone who has ever known or loved a teacher, um, mm -hmm. I, that's, that's the first thing that comes to mind. You know, if... Um, you know, we, we mistreat teachers. We talk about all these problems in the schools and we don't talk about the environment that we're creating for them to do their jobs and what's important in a classroom anymore. Um, and that makes me really mad. And I find that my best comedies come out of something that I'm really mad about. Mm. And that's why I think this one has so much humor and some of it's dark humor, but there's a lot of humor there just because it's so infinitely frustrating. And I think it's cathartic for us to get to know teachers again as people. Yeah. And, and I think this play does. And I'll kind of chime in. If, if you love school, come see this play. 
If you hated school, come, come see, see this play. play. Mm -hmm. If you loved your favorite teachers, come see this play. If you hated every teacher, come see this play. <laughs> Pretty much any human being out there should come see this play because you're going to have a good time. I mean, you're really going to have a good time. And I have to say this because if you've never seen a Topher Payne play, and some of our audience members have not, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to get inside the mind of this man. And it's a dark and twisted place. Come and check it out.